But that's another post. If anything like that happens, then fake vaccine papers or IDs might well be necessary if you want to drive over into Oregon. And so check with me. I might know a guy. Seven principles regarding fake IDs. I do realize that the subject is enormous and that a lot is involved in it. But I also realize that an enormity is being thrust on us. Believing Christians have three basic options. Compliance, non-compliance with a guilty conscience, and non-compliance with a clean conscience. I am urging you all to the third option, and I believe that these principles below can help with that. So with that said, here are seven principles to help you navigate all of this. First, if you're in a position to resist openly, do that. Don't go straight to the fake documentation. If at all possible, resist openly in concert with any others in your same position. Senator Rand Paul is exactly correct. However tyrannical they are in their hearts, they can't arrest everybody. If massive numbers of people simply refuse to take the vaccine, there's nothing they can do. Better yet, for example, if thousands of nurses and a hospital system simply refuse to take the vaccine, there's nothing they can do. This kind of open strike is much to be preferred, especially in the medical field. If they isolate one nurse and demand that she take the vaccine or get fired, they've got her. But if 300 nurses say no thanks and everybody knows about it, they've got the hospital. This is not rebellion against lawful authority. This would be an example of a free people refusing to go along with their own enslavement. Second, if you're not in a position to resist openly, then feel free before God to resist in this clandestine way. This will get you through the particular moment, and it also has the effect of helping to make all kinds of different vaccine IDs into a joke. If that happens, there will be demands for a national vaccine ID, and that should be relatively easy to prevent Congress from adopting. Now, I found this link and it, it kind of shocked me. Doug Wilson is essentially encouraging Christians, encouraging Christians to sin in regards to using fake IDs or vaccine IDs and fake passports in order to get around this current uh, atmosphere of vaccine cards and whatnot for the people that choose not to take the, uh, the vaccine. And there are a lot of Christians, brothers and sisters, who have chosen not to do so. Now, I want to explain and express why I believe that this advice is not just unbiblical, but also dangerous. When we look at Mark 12, 17, Jesus said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. Also, Romans 13, 1, let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God and those that exist have been instituted by God. We need to understand that when we make the decision to not do something, we don't then therefore decide to break the law in order to get around that very thing we've chosen not to partake in okay we as christians we don't wage war against the government we don't commit illegal acts okay having a fake id a fake passport that is a federal crime that is an illegal act and to the people that would say well keith well what what do i do then if i don't take the vaccine i'll lose my job then you lose your job okay and, and if you are a christian you trust the lord to provide your every need because I'm going to tell you what, let's say you do take uh, or you do go out and get a fake vaccine ID or a fake passport and you get caught and you go to prison. There was a woman in New York last year who got 15 years because she was selling fake vaccine pa or not passports, but cards that pretty much show that you've taken the vaccine. She made almost a million dollars from doing this. She got 15 years in prison. OK, they're not playing around with this stuff. Okay, it's not worth it. So you're worried about losing a job. You go out and get a fake ID and you get caught. You can go to prison. So not only will you lose your job, but your family will suffer because you're not here anymore. Okay. So in regards to the Christian submitting to the government authorities, okay, we don't break laws to get around it. We trust God. And if you refuse, if you make the decision not to take something, then stand on that as a, a Christian. Stand on that. OK, but don't break the law to get around it because you only endanger yourself and your family that you seek to provide for. So I think that this is very, uh, very foolish advice from Doug Wilson, and it's dangerous. So don't listen to that.